Good afternoon, everybody. It is such a pleasure to be here, and thank you for the kind introduction. Um, as she mentioned, my name is Sumner Norman. I'm the CEO of Forest Neurotech. We are a nonprofit focused research organization developing a minimally invasive brain implant. And that's all to say that my passion really lies in two things public impact and neurotechnologies. But especially the people that make th those sorts of things possible. And that's why I'm really excited to share with you today two incredible groups. Um, so, in the first session, um, we're going to learn about the state of the art in reconnecting ALS patients with their loved ones. And then in the next session, we'll learn about the next generation of brain machine interfaces and how that technology will change the future of movement, communication, and quality of life for people living with neurological disabilities and injuries. So, make sure to stick around for both. They're wonderful complimentary sessions. Um, and then I also want to invite you to join me tomorrow for another session on neurotechnology and its intersection with AI. Um, that's from 3 to 6 p.m. So, these two sessions share a couple things in common. So, you'll notice these notes as I go through them. The first one uh, is a UN sustainable development goal of good health and well being, and the second one is reducing inequality. And you'll notice those themes throughout both of these next sessions. Okay. First up today, I'm going to introduce you to a visionary in the field of AI powered language translation, Vasco Pedro. Vasco is the CEO and co founder of Unbabel, an AI driven language translation platform. So they're combining machine learning together with human translation to deliver some of the highest quality multilingual qu content you can imagine. So Vasco and his colleagues are going to be sharing a demonstration with us today, which I'm really excited to see.、Uh, this is the, the、uh, Halo, which uses generative AI together with non invasive neural interfaces to transform biosignals into language, again, helping ALS patients reconnect with their families and loved ones. So, under Vasco's leadership,、uh, Unbabel is really revolutionizing this space in machine translation and multilingual conversations.、Um, And they have done a phenomenal job. They have raised $91 million to date, US, and they're trusted by global industries, including leaders and partners like Adidas, Patagonia, and Panasonic. So today, we have the privilege of hearing from Vasco himself on the future of AI and language translation. And so, with that, I'll just ask you all to join me in welcoming Vasco to the stage. Okay, let's just drop this over here. Perfect. Hi, I'm Vasco. I'm co founder and CEO of Unbabel. Thank you for the presentation. This was awesome. I need to record this. Wow, I feel really important right now.、Um, so, Unbabel started by focusing on translation.、Uh, our goal was to build the world's translation layer. But underneath that, we always believe in this hybrid model of human and AI. Coming together to deliver something more powerful. And a few years ago, we started exploring this、um, in specifically looking at brain to computer interfaces and what was the future of how humans would communicate. Now, when I say we, Paul and I, this was a big brainstorm for years in the making.、Um, We didn't want to really create an invasive solution. I'm not quite ready to have something in my brain yet, but I really wanted to find a way to create something that people could use seamlessly. And we felt the technology was still not quite there, so we started exploring EEG、um, externally.、Uh, there's some significant issues、uh, with that. We're, you know, there's new technologies coming in every day, but there's still a lot of noise. And so we ended up settling on EMGs. Uh, coupled with LLMs. So, and Babel Halo came from that.、Um, and what we realized is even though long term our goal is to enable a consumer level of integration that would enable anyone to be augmented by brain to computer interfaces,、uh, what we realized is in the meantime, we actually had created something that could be benefit ALS patients right now. And so we felt it was、uh, too important not to have it deployed.、Uh, and that's what we've been working on.、Um, I mean, if you think about it, the human, there's around 7,100 languages in the world.、Um, most of them are going extinct. There seems to be a native need for humans to create new languages, is the way that, or one of the many ways we create tribes, that we create trust, that we identify people、uh, that we want to connect with.、Um, but there's this belief there is a fundamental center in the brain that deals with language. And so 
our thought was, well, maybe there's some sort of universal language uh, that we could tap into. Uh, it was the guiding force to try to um, create an interface that would enable, enable the brain to communicate directly. And as I said, uh, what we wanted to do uh, was to do this through a non-invasive neural interfaces. It was interesting because we were working on this for a few years, and then LLMs came, came around, uh, and we realized that they really gave us um, an, inc an incredible boost in what we could do with, and it made a technology that was promising but not really usable into something that could be used right now. So the first thing I want to do is just to give you a demo of what I'm talking about here. Um, I'm using the, one of the devices right now. I'm using one in my arm. You can't see it, but it's, it's here. Uh, and what I'll try to do is we'll go to a live demo, and what we'll do is um, Paul over there is going to write me a message over WhatsApp. You can see it here on the screen. And I'll respond without talking. Should be easy. OK, I got the message. Yep, it's good to be here. There we go. Yeah, so what's going on here? Uh, what's going on here is fairly simple. So it can look like magic, it's not. What's going on is that I have an EMG interface that enables me to navigate a model of potential answers that the LLM is generating because it knows my preferences, right? And so I only need a few little bits of information to be able to guide it and to get to the answer that I want. Meaning that all I need to do, think of this uh, metaphor for me is, all you need to do is really type one word and it expands into a full sentence, right? So it reduces the cognitive load to be able to interact and to respond. Uh, and in that sense, makes it much easier for me to be able to actually appear uh, in a conversation and express what I want to say in a usable amount of time. Now, if you had to do this on, a, on, a, um, on an ongoing basis, um, you know, it's not quite ready for us to have a real-time conversation. As you can see, there's a bit of a delay. Yep. There we go. See, like, it looks super easy because it's actually most of the work is being done by the LLM, right? So I'm just offloading my cognitive abilities, and this enables me to have a fairly seamless conversation, especially if it was on our WhatsApp, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Now, this is really interesting. It's good progress. Uh, you know, we're at a point where there's going to be a continuing evolution, both on the BCI interfaces, the LLMs, and the integration. And so we do think that this will become commercial on a consumer level in the, I wouldn't say near time future, but in the foreseeable future. But what I want to show you is the impact of this technology in a much more important situation, right? Uh, so perhaps we could go back to the slides so that I can introduce someone very important. Now, Stephen Hawking, uh, as probably all of you know, had ALS. Um, it was one of the most brilliant minds of our time. And yet, he was communicating at around two words per minute, right? If you look at the average uh, types of interfaces that ALS patients have, right now, state of the art with eye tracking gets you at about 10 words per minute, right? which is still much better than Stephen Hawking, but uh, there's a lot of issues with it. You know, it gets very tiring on the eyes. If the machine isn't there uh, and they're in a different location, for example, it's very hard to move the equipment. And so very often, as soon as they're out of this equipment, ALS patients stop being able to communicate. Um, with Halo, what we realize is that we're around 15 words per minute. So that is not only a significant improvement on the speed of interaction, but if you can see it, I'm wearing it right now. It's not very obtrusive, especially for an LS patient or for other locked-in syndromes. Um, and so we thought uh, the best thing would be to show you actually a live demo of someone using it. Um, and I'd like to introduce you to Luis. Luis will be remote. Um, he's an LS patient. Uh, he has been fundamental in the collaboration and development of Halo. Um, he has had LS for two years, and he went from a very active lifestyle, as you can imagine, with uh, dealing with uh, severe issues in communication, and unfortunately lost the ability to communicate with his family uh, in the process. Um, 
maybe we can go to the uh, live demo. There we go. Here's Luis. Hello, Luis. It's great to have you on the stage. And so what we'll do is uh, Paulo will be typing in Portuguese uh, because Luis speaks Portuguese. Uh, and you'll be able to see the monitor so you can see the interaction. Uh, so Luis is not able to speak, so he'll be communicating exclusively through Halo. Um, and maybe we can put the computer on the screen just so that we can, there we go. Perfect. So Paul is asking, how do you feel in the uh, AI for Good Global Summit? Right. There we go. So OK. And Louise answered, I feel honored and very excited to be here. It is an incredible experience, right? You can see the device. I'm wearing my device on my arm. Louise is wearing his device on his head. Um, now, an interesting thing, and we're announcing today a partnership with OpenAI. We're using their new voice uh, LLM, which enables us to do something really incredible that completes the circle. Most LS patients tend to have their voice recorded in one way or another, either through voice messages or other means. And so what we're able to do is to recreate Louis' voice using the voice LLM, so that actually when he communicates, he's communicating with his voice. And we're going to try and play uh, his voice for you here. I don't know if you can press play. Sinto-me honrado e entusiasmado por estar aqui. É uma experiência incrível. <laughs> for Luis, it's, uh, yeah. it's always emotional when he gets his voice back. Espero que o Halo me ajude a comunicar melhor com a minha família e amigos. Estou otimista. The second question was, by the way, uh, what is the future of Halo for you? And he answered, I hope Halo helps me communicate better with my family and friends. I am very optimistic. Um, now, uh, yeah, it's, sorry, this is a bit emotional. Um, as you can imagine, recovering your voice when you thought that was no longer possible is a deeply uh, emotional and connective experience. Uh, and even though this technology is still early on, we can see immediately the impact that it can have in a lot of people with this uh, unfortunate, uh, unfortunate disease. Um, what we would like to do... Adoro jogar no computador e ver séries de ficção científica. E tu, Paulo? The, the third question is, what's your favorite hobby? Um, I love to play in computer and see sci-fi uh, shows. What about you, Paulo? Um, and uh, perhaps, do you think we can do let the audience ask a question. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's. We'd love to have someone that wants to ask a question. There's a microphone here. It can be about anything. It's a live demo. It can always go wrong. How about you? There you go. Yes. Hi, Paulo. Nice to meet you. And Paul will be translating, so you can ask in English, Boa, and Paul will translate. E what has been the biggest uh, breakthrough of this technology for you? What has been, so the question, what has been the biggest breakthrough of the technology for you? Paul will do a, you know, hopefully as good as GPT translation. <laughs> or he can send it to Unbabel if we can take care of it. Either way, but uh, real time. And then if you can scroll a little bit on the computer just so we can see it, it should show up. There we go. Um, and we'll have one more interaction. OK, so this is what's the biggest advance of technology for you. Um, as you can see, the headband is important for ALS patients because it requires EMGs, requiring muscle movement, to decode biosignals. And the last muscles, or the muscles that tend to stay the longest, tend to be on the face. Acho que vai revolucionar a forma como comunicamos, especialmente para quem tem dificuldades. Estou muito entusiasmado. So what Luis says is, I think it will revolutionize the way we communicate, especially for those that have difficulties. I am very enthusiastic. I'm very excited about it. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank Luis. We're going to go back to the presentation. Thank you so much for your help. Luis has been completely instrumental and fundamental in advancing the state. Thank you, Luis. Okay. Um, 
sorry, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a dream to be here and to be able to be at this point where I can show this to you uh, and to do it with a live patient and to see the impact, I think for me is very, very important to see directly the good that I can do. Uh, coming from an AI background, there's always this question of like, is AI going to kill us? Well, certainly in some cases, it will just help us be more human. And it's really great when we see this. So how does Halo work? I mean, it's fairly straightforward. In this case, you're seeing the, uh, the image of the headband. Um, yeah, there you go. And what it does is I'm wearing headphones, so is Luis. The headphones enable me to receive the messages and so to receive the possible uh, possibilities that the LLM is uh, generating as I navigate with it, uh, and the headband collects biosignals for me to be able to interact with it. Um, now, an important part here is this creation of an AI persona, which was uh, a little bit of breakthrough in this uh, application. And this AI persona essentially is trained on your data, right? So it's an LLM based uh, technology that is trained on as much data as you can provide it. Uh, it's kept, obviously, uh, secure. It's only applicable to you. But it continuously learns and tries to predict what are you trying to say, so that if you're asking a question that it knows about food and it knows your preferences are a certain kind, it will be more likely to kind of immediately generate questions in that space, uh, sorry, answers in that space. Um, it learns about uh, you know, your conversations, preferences, locations, relationships, beliefs, anything you want to give it so that it can do a better job in helping you communicate with the world. I think that it's, um, it's let me go, yeah. Uh, it also, we feed it with what's your social circles. It's very important to be able to have specific relationships with those that you love. Uh, for example, Louis' second message, uh, especially when he got his voice, was just to express how much he loved his wife. Uh, that's something he wanted to be able to say again. Uh, and, and it is really one of the major uh, driving forces for those people with ILS to keep them going is the connection to their loved ones and their close ones. And so social circles are an important part of information uh, and how we relate with them. Uh, and here, your AI persona can really help in navigating. I think this also fits into this vision that I think we'll see more and more going forward, which is um, kind of having AI personas be uh, your, your communication gateway to uh, other digital spaces. We're being flooded with information. I think it makes sense that we'll have AI helping us sift through that information and be able to uh, help us navigate the information space more efficiently. This is a very specific use case of that in a case where it's extremely needed, but I see this kind of technology uh, developing and being used in more use cases. And then, as I mentioned, voice cloning, super important for the end user in this case. This wasn't really our focus when we started. Uh, to be honest, I think that it was more about telepathy and how do you actually enhance human cognition. But having for ALS patients the ability to generate their voice is incredibly important. And so we want to th thank, as I mentioned, OpenAI for the partnership and the access to the voice LLM, which is not publicly available. This was, uh, made a difference especially for Louise, was incredibly important. Um, and then finally, I just want to talk about how this relates to the sustainable development goals. I mean, I would say, uh, obviously, I mean, I think it's apparent, right? Like, reducing inequality is super important. Uh, bringing people uh, closer to their loved ones. Um, enabling people to have an actually uh, a better health, more life expansion. I mean, communication is essential to uh, maintaining health, to express what you need, to be able to say what's wrong with you or what's going well. Um, and so it's something we very much believe in. Uh, this has been developed uh, within uh, the Center for uh, Responsible AI. Uh, and Babel is leading this consortium in Portugal. There's been a bunch of investment in it. Uh, and the whole consortium is about creating AI that is responsible, transparent, uh, which Paulo, by the way, is the CEO of and has done a brilliant, brilliant work. Um, with that, I just want to say thank you. It's been a pleasure to be able to demo this to you, and we look forward to what's coming in the future. Thank you very much. That was phenomenal. Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys, can we just give one more round of applause to Vasco and especially Luis? That was mind-blowing. Yeah.